Welcome back to the studio. The other day I was at Harbor Freight and somebody recognized me and came up and started talking to me about quilting. Harbor Freight's kind of a funny place for quilting, but also Lowe's and Home Depot because there's actually a lot of things in there that uh, quilters can use in the studio. Um, and I think a lot of quilters are catching on to that. I know a lot of people go in and buy magnets uh, that they use on the long arm to uh, connect their uh, quilt top and backing to the uh, take up lever or the uh, top rail. I haven't used any of those. I like to pen mine. But also the different cup holders and magnetic, uh, like the magnetic screw holders that men use for their tools. You can also use those to hold pens and stuff. At any rate, the conversation got to um, a storing paper pantos. And um, that is something that um, we've also heard come up in questions online. And we recently did a video about uh, paper pantos again, and that question came up. And I just did a video on uh, beginning quilting and some of the free paper pantos that we have on the website and how to go about finding those and downloading those. And I, that was actually the last video that I did. So I still have the paper paper, paper panto that we I downloaded and constructed. And I have that right here on the board. So um, what I was gonna do today is just talk about some of the storage solutions that I've had um, come up with over the years. But it's constantly evolving, it's constantly changing, and the reason is uh, because your collection changes as time goes on. Uh, it increases, uh, perhaps it changes, uh, you start developing categories, and you might find you have different sizes as well. Um, so in the beginning, you know, I only had a few. Um, I know I've told this story before, but I knew Patricia uh, from Urban Elements when she first started, uh, when she first started designing the first couple pantos. I used to help her trim the edges and roll up the pantos and stuff them in the paper sleeves at the very beginning. Um, so I remember I used to get to test drive them and so I only had one or two so storage wasn't a big problem. And um, I don't remember exactly how, but I remember when we first started talking about uh, doing a show at Houston, we started talking about how we would take all the pantos and how we would store them. And one of the first things we talked about was kind of like a sh over the over the door shoe rack, those kind of a bag that holds shoes over the door. And um, that was one of the things we first thought about, but they really don't hold very much. But there is something that's kind of similar to that now, and that is uh, by Top Notch. And I got this at a, a crafting big box store. And this particular one holds 24 vinyl rolls, and that's for the vinyl roll holders for like a, a scanning cut machine or a Cricut kind of thing. And that's what this is here. I only have, uh, I don't even have a build all the way to the top. And I only have the front of this loaded. This is uh, actually double sided so I could have these on the front and the back. But you can see I've got mostly one size on here but there's a, actually a larger size on here. This is a 16 inch but most of these are um, 9 inch patterns with smaller ones. <clears throat> but So that's just one of the solutions. But when I started with a smaller collection, something like this was pretty adequate. Um, I could carry this, move it around easy. I could put um, some of the smaller ones, these would have been petite, and um, some of the other ones. And the nice thing is I could even label these for um, alphabet, uh, for boys, girls, or for whatever. So I could uh, get different labeling going and different categories, and that was good for, I probably could have put 25 or, or so in here. Uh, this is another good solution. This is again was from a crafting big box store 
This is uh, from Artben. Artben makes a lot of really great storage solutions for crafting and quilting. I've got a ton of their stuff at my studio upstairs and downstairs. Uh, I use it for storing fat quarters, for two and a half inch strips, uh, different products from Artben. Um, and again, this is a vinyl storage uh, can, uh, product. For your, uh, the vinyl is for the uh, like the scanning cup machines, um, but it also works perfect for these pantos. And these could be mounted on the uh, wall, and it would make it a little bit more stable. And it comes with the screws for that. And this particular one holds 12, so um, you could get a couple of those and put your most popular ones on the wall in the studio. But I also have things like this. Um, I just think they're cute. The heads uh, kind of keep me company here in the studio. And I have several of these heads uh, around the room, but it's just something that gives me a little bit of a chuckle. But also you could keep your most used pantos um, at the ready, just sitting on top of the counter uh, by your radio or by uh, some of your other tools. Um, it's just a great way uh, to keep them. I don't, uh, I try and keep all the rest of my pantos still back in their plastic um, when I'm not going to be using them because dust and um, you know anything else, oil, tea. I'm always drinking in here and I don't want to spill, walk, be walking and spill tea on something. So I keep them in the plastic. But if I know I'm going to be using one over and over and over again, then I don't always put it back in the plastic. So, um, these are just some of the things that um, you can get to store your paper pantos. This particular company also makes another one of these. Uh, basically, it looks like this, but it is kind of like three of these put together in a triangular fashion, and it's on a spinner. And so I would imagine since this is a 12 one, it would be 36 because it's three sides of that. And so it would spin, and it would hold 36 pantos. That uh, is a pretty good collection, um, and these kinds of solutions are good for a pretty good while until you start getting a bigger collection. Um, my collection has certainly outgrown these kinds of solutions, and um, so what I did beyond this was I got a little bit more uh, in-depth than that. What I had to do next was get IKEA uh, those wire racking systems that have the drawer and um, I had a couple of those and I have the pantos in the drawer units and then I just labeled the, the drawers for alphabetical or for uh, different themes like Christmas or Halloween or something but then I also um, needed more space and so I got baskets and I'll show you what one of the baskets looks like This one's a little bit messy because I've been pulling stuff out of it. But I had baskets like this underneath the um, long arm machine. And I also had these alphabetized. Um, and you know, you're constantly having to change these because uh, the pantos don't necessarily come out um, in alphabetical order evenly. So you'll find that some letters like M or B might have like 200 pantos and then something like Y or Z only have two or three. So um, you're constantly kind of moving the baskets and putting different pantos and different ones and changing the alphabet. But still it's a pretty good storage solution. Um, they're easy to find alphabetically uh, but you could also make yourself a cheat sheet like a spreadsheet and uh, tell yourself where one goes whether it's a holiday uh, basket or it's an alphabetical basket um, and that's one way to store them um, another thing that um, you could pay attention to is the different themes of the um, pantos themselves there are three different basic sizes to the pantos that we sell and they're also uh, a couple of different things like we have the regular panto 
and we also have club sets. So I'm going to show you a club set and that will, because um, some of you may not have ever seen those. Um, I know when we used to do shows and I used to show club sets, people were kind of surprised they'd never seen those before. So I'm going to put the basket aside and then we'll do uh, show you a, cl a club set, but I'm also going to pour you in a little bit. As I said a few minutes ago, this was a self print option from uh, our free collection on the website. Um, you can filter the quilting designs by the subcategory of free, or you could look up free in the search engine and just know that some of the Panto's names will be have free in the title and those won't necessarily be free. Um, I've glued these pages together and I've also used tape on both sides so that when you uh, when I roll it up I could go ahead and roll these up just like we do the regular panto and I could roll them up a little bit tighter and get those into the same kind of um, size that uh, we would with the other pantos and I could store those uh, just the same as those here. This is um, a six inch panto. This is a pretty small one, this is a basic. So you could store these, uh, differentiate them by size. This one's six inches. Um, and it's also a single row. So these are different categories that you could do. So there's just a single pass on here. Uh, you could uh, keep them separated by single rows. We have some that are double rows, and you could do that as well. And then we also have these that are club sets. And um, the club set uh, is basically a collection of designs all geared around one particular theme. This particular theme is Daisy Doodle. It has the uh, daisies, the dots, and the curves. And you'll see this one has a full size circular block, a circular block with more of an empty space in the middle, setting triangles, corner triangles. It has a full size corner if you wanted to use the panto for a border element. And then it has the full size panto with the echo at the top and bottom so you can realign. So uh, these are just a couple of the different types of pantos that we have and those are uh, different ways that you might want to uh, store them or keep them collectively. So <clears throat> we have a regular size or the petite or the grande. Those are three different sizes that you could keep. We have the club sets and we have single row and double row uh, pantos. Single row, double row, um, there's a lot of different ways you could categorize them or uh, keep them. Um, you could be very, very uh, organized and do a spreadsheet and keep uh, putting the pantos back exactly where you get them after you're done with them each time and make sure you don't uh, lose track of something. Uh, holidays is a good way to keep track, uh, you know, separating them, boys and girls. Uh, you could do uh, flowers, feathers, geometric, uh, modern. Those are good ways to categorize them also. But we don't necessarily have all the best ideas for storage on paper pandas. We know that you have come up with some of your own great ideas as well. So um, we would like to see uh, or hear some of the ideas that you've come up with storing your paper pantos because we know we've had a lot of people buy paper pantos, a lot of paper pantos over the years and we know that you're storing them in creative ways as well. So we'd love to see some of the things that you've done with yours. We'd love to see you post pictures in the comments below and also we're going to do a uh, catnap question uh, hopefully before or after this video and post that question again so we can get the most um, most input as possible on this question and I just think it'll be kind of interesting to see what you all have come up with as far as storage. So that's pretty much what we had for you today. Um, thanks for stopping in. I think the next time I'm here uh, I'm going to be doing a, a repeat of the uh, download, but I'm going to do all of the different sizes of the self-print downloads, the 
we have uh, some that are uh, single sheets, double sheets. Some of them are all the way up to six sheets just to create one repeat. Um, and that's basically because the pantos are different size designs. That's it. So um, thanks for stopping by. I hope uh, some of this information was helpful as far as storing your pantos, but we really look forward to seeing some of your solutions that you've come up with because um, creativity is infectious and we want to learn from each other. So until next time, uh, take care of yourself and take care of each other. And thanks for stopping by the studio today.